Hello everyone, this is Bring on the Kiss Kizzy for Nur What If. What if Naruto and Meitrumi were couples? Before we start, hit your like and subscribe for more What If. If you want to request a new series, if you want this fanfic of full series, please comment three hearts and say the fanfic that you wanted. Before we start, please check out the link in the description below. Check out this beautiful author. You'll really like his stuff and you know, like probably the lemons i didn't check all of it yet <clears throat> not not yet but made me exclusively i check out a couple of chapters like after ch chapter four i guarantee it's great you should listen to this storyline and you surely enjoyed it so without further ado let's just get started chapter five Naruto had gotten into a bit of a Rushenine for the past few weeks, train with Guy in the morning, train with Asuma during the day and see Mei at night. He had just a week left in the leaf, and things were going quite well. He could now complete the leaf cutting exercise, and could infuse Kubakiri Boko with some wind chakra making it able to cut through nearly anything, combined with his new refined Taijutsu and Asuma's Kinjutsu, things were going quite well. He had just woken up and was getting ready to leave. Mei had woken up as well. She had a meeting with Sunid about Naruto's transfer. So, what are you and Asuma going to be doing today? She asked the blonde. Actually, he just finished teaching two wind moves, great breakthrough and slicing air palms, I was actually gonna see if I could find Sunid when you go to see her and get out some of those wind scrolls my parents left me. Naruto replied, with a hint of pride in his voice. Mei was happy to hear that, her future husband was getting stronger at a rate no one could believe. Great, always happy to spend a little time with you Naruto-kun. Naruto smirked, oh believe me I know. You want us to wait till the wedding, but if you keep doing the things that you did last night, I won't be able to control myself. Mei laughed, I didn't hear you complaining. Naruto laughed in return, no, I guess you didn't. They walked out of the apartment and started heading towards the Hokage's office. Mei glanced back at Naruto, you're making great progress with your wind style. But unfortunately, the mist isn't much better off when in comes to wind user than leaf is, and we only have one qualified seal expert, only he would be able to help you with sealing, and a kid your age who's pretty good with wind style who might be able to help you. Naruto raised an eyebrow, really, who are they? Our seal expert's name is Maizura Shinsuke, he was actually one of the only non-bloodline users who was willing to help us. If he hasn't figured out a way to seal of Yuguru from his tailed beast chakra, I don't think we could have one, said Mei with an inward look. You mean like the one Orokimaru used on me? Naruto asked. Mei shook her head, no, Orokimaru is considered to be a butcher when sealing, other than his curse mark which is only any good thanks to using dark chakra. Naruto nodded, and the wind user. Well, he's not actually a wind user, he just can use wind, he actually about your age. He has a bloodline known as Dragon Flame Release, which due to his wind chakra being mixed in with his fire chakra, makes any fire jutsu he uses incredibly powerful. He learned how to separate them to improve his control, his name is Zawabo Kursuki. Naruto nodded again and Mei thought back to the first time she had met each of them. Flashback, Maizura. A 13-year-old Mei stood watching the The Resistance debate with interest, she may have only been 13, but she was at the level of Jonan so she was allowed to sit in on the meetings. Look, I just don't think we can trust this guy, he might be a spy for Yuguru. One of them said. I don't think so, 
Yuguru still thinks we're just a bunch of unorganized smaller groups. He hasn't shown any sign that he knows we all work together. We've been very careful about that, another spoke up. Then how did he know that we were all one group? Someone asked. He's the best sealer in the mist, maybe he's been using sound recording seals, one suggested. Then why wouldn't he tell Yuguru, why does Wana help us? I bet Yagwaru knows and sent him in to spy. Mei was getting stressed from the loudness of the room, and decided to speak up herself. Well, if he was a spy, and he can use recording devices, why Yuguru even bother to send in a spy? He would just arrest us all now. We need all the help we can get, I say we take the risk. One of the leaders spoke next, exactly what I was thinking. We could really use a seal expert. If you really want to see if you can trust him, why not just ask him why he's willing to help us? May suggested. They all nodded, it was better than nothing. Please send Mizura in. A 15-year-old with medium-length black hair and hazel eyes walked into the room, now, Mizura, please tell us why you're willing to help us when no one else without a bloodline will. Mizura paused and began to speak, my father was one of the executioners for the bloodline purge before he died. I went to watch him once when I was younger, I watched a woman beg for her son's life, he was only four months old. I watched my father stick a scalpel in his neck. I watched his mother collapse down on the ground, she didn't cry, didn't lash out for revenge, she just laid there broken. They killed her next, she didn't fight at all, when I asked him about it, his response was, she just didn't understand it was for the good of the mist. If that was for the good of the mist, then the mist needs to change. I can't forget that look on her face, watching the life leave her eyes as she watched her son die, I just need to do something, anything to help. Mizura was an official member of the resistance within an hour. Flashback Zawabo a 12-year-old May was walking through the through the forest on the outskirts of the village when she heard a noise nearby. She looked around until she found the source, a small boy brown-haired, fair-skinned boy was crying into his arms. May sat down next to him and asked him, Are you okay, why are you crying? He looked at her with large green eyes, I'm a monster. Sniff. I killed him, I didn't mean to kill him, I swear. Sniff. What do you mean? May asked. I went to do a fire jutsu my teacher had showed me. It was supposed to make a little stream thing from my mouth. He said to use just a little and I did, but it went nuts and burned really big and. And. He buried his face in May's shoulder and cried. May could easily figure out what happened, he was trying to use flickering flame tongue and he must have had some kind of bloodline that enhanced it before the teacher could figure out what was happening. May just let him cry in her shoulder, she didn't mind, the poor boy needed it. He had ended up joining the resistance and learning about his bloodline, which he named Dragon Flame Release, and stayed close with May, who he came to view as a big sister. We'll wear at the tower, see you later Mei Chan, said Naruto snapping Mei out of her thoughts. Oh all right. See you Naruto-kun, she replied and they parted ways. Naruto walked into Sunid's office and looked around, he found Sunid in the Hokage's vault reading a scroll and mumbling to herself, Hey Barkin, you care if I grab some of my scrolls from here? Sunid nodded, yeah fine, just leave everything like you found it. Shouldn't you be leaving for that consul meeting with Mei? Naruto asked. Sunad looked up startled, damn it. I'll see you later. 
She hurried from the room and failed to realize she hadn't out the scroll properly on the self and it quickly fell. Naruto shook his head and placed it back on the shelf. He glanced at it and got a little confused. It said, Uchiha Massacre S ranked classified. That didn't make sense. Why would there be anything classified about that? What could be secret about that? Naruto shook his head and grabbed the scrolls he needed and left. Maybe he would ask Sasuke about it later. Naruto looked at one of the scrolls he had grabbed. It was his father's and was labeled Wind Style Cyclone Shuriken, which would make a concentrated shuriken of wind to be thrown that would make a small impact and send waves of slicing wind at the enemy. It looked like it was meant to eventually be combined with the raising gun. He looked it over again and got to work. Naruto was walking home, having made a little bit of progress on the cyclone shuriken and saw Sasuke walking by so he flagged him down. Hey Sasuke, he screamed. Sasuke looked up, what? I know it's kinda none of my business, but we would there be a document about the Uchiha massacre that was classified, I saw one in the Hokage's vault today and I'm kinda curious. Naruto asked. Sasuke frowned, I don't actually know. That doesn't make any sense, what secrets could there be about that? I gotta know what's in that scroll. I could sneak you into the vault if you want, Naruto suggested. Sasuke raised an eyebrow, you do that for me. Why? Naruto shrugged, you're my friend, of course I would, besides, no one's better at sneaking into the Hokage's office than me. Sasuke nodded, alright, tonight then. Meet me on the roof of the building next to it at about 9 o'clock, Naruto said, and they parted ways. Naruto got back and informed Mei on the day's events making her laugh, don't you have any respect for Sunid at all? Naruto laughed in return, nope, so how did the council meeting go? Mei scowled, that warhawk Danzo tried to discreetly put in a clause that would allow him to raise any kids we might have here. Luckily Sunid and I stomped that out. Naruto smiled, do you ever think about us having kids? Mei smiled back, of course, I've always wanted kids, what about you? Naruto thought for a second, I don't know, I never really had a family so this is all kinda new to me. Mei nodded, it's okay, you've got plenty of time to think about, I'm sure you're gonna warm up to the idea, why don't you head out, oh and if you get caught, you never told me about this. Naruto roared with laughter and headed out to meet Sasuke. Naruto and Sasuke stood in the Hokage's vault with the scroll in hand, Sasuke couldn't believe how easily Naruto had gotten them there, where did you learn how to sneak in here that easily? Naruto laughed, I practically lived here when I was younger, it's gotten pretty easy for me. Sasuke smirked and opened the scroll, they began to read. Sasuke was shaking, everything around him was blurry, Nothing seemed real. He could hear Naruto's voice but it seemed like it was a mile away, Sasuke. Sasuke. Sasuke, come on man talk to me. Everything he knew in this world was a lie, he was just trying to get everything straight in his head. Should he still hate Itachi? Could he trust any of the leaf villagers? Who all knew about this? What in the hell was going on? Why wouldn't they tell me, why did Itachi have to leave, I would have given anything to have had him stay. He did all of this for me and the leaf, so why did he have to leave, why did he make me hate him? Sasuke asked. He want you to have a good life, you would have been like me, the villagers would hate you, they'd view you as the one of the traitors. Atachi needed you to hate him, 
He wanted you to get strong. Kill him, and bring honor back to your clan, Naruto told him. Sasuke had tears in his eyes, I wouldn't have cared if they hated me, if I had Itachi with me it wouldn't matter. I looked up to him, he was everything I wanted to be and then the massacre happened. I thought I was all alone, I couldn't trust anyone after what Itachi did. Naruto put a hand on his shoulder, he did this so you could create whatever kind of life you wanted, held back by nothing. Sasuke don't waste that. I don't know, I always said I would rebuild my clan but. The more I learn about the more impossible that goal seems, Sasuke told him. Naruto frowned, bullshit, my whole life people have either viewed me as a monster that needed to be locked away or weapon to be used. I'm gonna bring peace to the ninja world, something that seems impossible, but damn it I'm gonna do it. Sasuke looked at him, I just need some time to think, don't tell anyone about this, just. Just let me try to straighten this out in my head. Naruto nodded, alright, just don't don't anything rash okay. Sasuke just looked at him and left Naruto to worry about his friend. Sasuke was walking home, just trying to figure out what all of this meant, when he heard a rustle in the trees and felt chakra signatures near the treetop, whoever the you are, come out now and won't kill you. Four people dropped in front of him, a girl with red hair and a bandana, and fat man with brown skin, a six-armed man, and white-haired man with green lips. They all looked kind of freaking, the one with white hair spoke up, so, you're Lord Orokimaru's next project, interesting, you don't look like much. I'm Saken, the red-haired girl is Taoya, the six-armed one in Kidomaru, and the fat one is Jirobo. Sasuke scowled, what does that sneak freak want with me? The fuck did you just say, Taoya swore. Um. Taoya, Jirobo began. Not one word fattus, she snapped. Saken spoke up again, enough you two, now then, Lord Orokimaru is offering you the power you seek to destroy your brother. He can make it so that the curse mark is even more powerful than it is now. All he asks in return is your loyalty, nothing less, nothing more. And if I refuse? Sasuke asked. Kidomaru spoke up next, then I tie your ass in web and drag you back to be used for experiments. You act like it would be easy to take me down, Sasuke shot back. Second side, look, we've made our offer, you think on it, and then, contrary to what my six arm friend said, you can come if you please, and we'll leave you alone if you don't want to. We don't want you if you're uncooperative, it'll cause more trouble than good, well be at the gate at midnight. The four of them jumped back into the trees, and Sasuke frowned, it seemed as though all of the major decisions in his life were going to be decided on in one day. Naruto got to the apartment found Mei sleeping, he walked up to the head and gently shook her awake, Mei groggily looked up and smiled, hey Naruto-kun, what's up? Let's just say it was very eventful. Mei-chan can I ask you something important? Naruto asked. Mei looked up, she could tell this was important, Naruto-kun what is it? It's just, the thing with Sasuke and all these secrets it's got me wondering. Mei-chan did you only get close to me for the sake of the mist, or do really care about me? Naruto looked up at her with hopeful eyes. Mei looked surprised, Naruto-kun, we both know that this got started because of a political marriage, but I of course I care about you. I've gotten to know you, and you're a great guy, if I'm being forced to marry someone I'm glad it's you. 
Naruto-kun you don't need to worry, I like you a lot. I don't know if I would call it love yet, but I need you to know that I would never play you like that. Naruto smiled, thanks Mei-chan, that means a lot. Mei got a seductive smile on her face, want to have a little fun before bed to ease your mind. Yes please. Naruto said and leaned forward to capture her lips in a kiss. Naruto woke up to the sound of a bird tapping on his window, he looked over to see it was a messenger bird. He opened the window and took the message. Naruto couldn't believe what he read I sighed. Sasuke was attempting to leave the village, he was on his way to the hidden sound as he read. Naruto was screaming at the top of his lungs, why would he leave, I thought he had changed. It doesn't make sense. Shikamaru and Naruto had been chosen to lead the retrieval mission, they had Kiba, Neji and Choji with them. Choji spoke up next, Naruto maybe there's more to this than we think. Look it doesn't matter, all that matters right now is that we find him, Kiba told them. They all nodded except for Naruto, he just stood there and waited until it was time to head out. They had a slight advantage due to that fact they had to complete Sasuke's curse mark, so they had time to catch up. They could still catch him, Naruto could still find out why. They had been traveling non-stop for the past hour, Kiba told them they were gaining on the scent of the sound ninja. Neji activated his Byakugan to look around, I can see one person up ahead, looks like one of them split from the group. Shikamaru scowled, damn, we don't have time for this. Choji spike up, you guys keep moving, I'll handle this you guys go one ahead. You sure? Shikamaru asked. Yeah, you guys keep going, Choji told them. They left and Choji jumped into the clearing, the battle was about to start. They continued on for about 20 minutes, when Neji told them he saw another person out on a branch. We don't have freaking time for this, Naruto yelled. Shikamaru analyzed the situation, we need Kiba to keep us in the scent and Naruto's definitely the strongest of us, it we best to save him just in case we meet someone too strong for us, so that leaves me or Neji. You go on ahead, the team needs your intelligence more than my eyes, Neji told Shikamaru. Shikamaru nodded, alright, catch up with us when you can. They left as Neji jumped onto a branch near some six-armed man. The man started the fight by shooting webbing at him, Neji could tell this was gonna be tough. They kept gaming on Sasuke to the point that they were only 15 minutes behind, they were stopped by red-headed girls screaming at them, hey dumb fucks. I don't know how you got this far and I don't care, you shitheads stop right here. Shikamaru sighed, and made hand seal, Kiba, Naruto, get moving. I just caught in shadow possession, but you don't have much time. What the fuck, when do you do this, let me go dammit, Tauya swore. Go already, Shikamaru told them, and they went on their way. Saken was getting nervous, the leaf ninja were just a few minutes away from them, and Sasuke couldn't come out for another 10 minutes, he stopped when he looked to see an ill-white-haired man up ahead, what the hell are you doing here, I thought you were dead. I will be soon, give me the boy I'll go as fast as I can, you hold the others off, he told him. Just as he left Saken saw the leaf ninja closing in, too late, by the time you get to him it'll be finished, and he'll belong to Lord Orikimaru. Naruto get moving, I can handle this freak, you need to talk to Sasuke when he wakes up, KBA yelled. Naruto jumped into the trees and started running towards the man carrying Sasuke, while Kiba got into battle position. 
Naruto continued on to find the white-haired man alone next to an empty barrel, where is he? That is none of your concern, what you need to be worried about is me killing you, the man replied. Naruto got ready to fight when a green blue entered the scene, it was Lee and he was seemed to be drunk, Naruto hiccup, you get going hiccup, I want to soar with this hiccup, guy. Naruto chose not to look a gift horse in the mouth and went after Sasuke, leaving Lee to have his fun. Naruto had reached the valley of the end to find Sasuke standing in the middle. He looked up at Naruto and motioned for him to come over. Naruto screamed as ran towards him, Sasuke. Naruto reached Sasuke, he was panting slightly, Naruto. Sasuke began. Naruto cut him off, what the hell? I thought you finally understood, I thought you were finally gonna stop obsessing over your brother, but no. Why damn it, why the hell are you leaving, and if you say it's to get strong enough to kill your brother I'm gonna kick the every living shit out of you. Naruto I'm going undercover, Sasuke finished. What? Naruto was dumbfounded. Sasuke looked at the ground, Naruto, I still don't know how to feel about the leaf, Itachi, anything really. The only person I feel I can really trust is you, which is why I feel I owe it to you to tell you the truth. Other than Sunid you're the only one who know about this. I'm sorry but I just need to get out of the village for a while, and this seems like the best way to do it. Naruto was still confused, what about your friends who almost died to bring you back? Sunid has Jonan keeping an eye on all of them, if things get to Suro yes they'll intervene, Sasuke told him. You really need to do this? Naruto asked. Sasuke nodded, yes I do. Naruto had tears in his eyes, fine, good luck. I guess I won't be seeing you at the wedding. No you won't, your good friend Naruto, thank you for everything. Sasuke had moist eyes as well. Sasuke walked away leaving Naruto to stand there, Naruto turned around and went back towards the leaf, thinking of his friend the entire time. Naruto stood in the Hokage's office with his friends. Sakura was crying, Shikamaru felt bad about getting friends hurt, Shino wished he could have gone on the mission, Kakashi felt like he had failed his students, and Naruto pretend like he hated himself for not being fast enough. Why did he leave? Sakura sobbed. Hino held her friend, it's okay forehead girl, he's just confused at all. Naruto wanted so badly to tell his friend the truth but he knew he couldn't, I'm sorry Sakura. Sakura looked up and wiped her eyes, it's not your fault, they were too far gone by the time you found out about it. I'm just so sad, Team 7 is gone, without you and Sasuke it's just not Team 7 anymore. Sunad spoke up next. Sakura and I had already discussed her becoming my apprentice, so I think I'll just make it official now. Kakashi, you just spend the your free time training, the Akatsuki is still out there and we're going to need you as strong as we can get you. Kakashi nodded, he didn't really want to train another team anyway, Team 7 had meant too much to him to just move on. Sakura went up to Naruto, Naruto, we've got to stay in touch, promise to come visit me every time you're in town. Naruto smiled, of course. Alright everyone but Naruto clear the room, I've got to talk to him, said Sunid. They did as they were told, what do you need, he asked. Sunid looked at him, I know you're not going to tell anyone about Sasuke going undercover are you? I know you know so don't play dumb. I'm not going to tell anyone, Naruto whispered, almost to himself. 
He left the room and went back to the apartment. The last week of being in the leaf went by quickly. He didn't open up to many people about how he was really feeling. Only Aruka knew just how sad the boy was. It bothered Mei slightly that he wouldn't open up to her about it, but she knew they had only been together a month she had to give it time. They were going to leave tomorrow. Mei was still worried about Naruto, but she was excited about going back home. She was going to do everything in her power to make it feel like home for Naruto. Naruto and Mei stood at the gate of the Hidden Leaf saying their final goodbyes to all of their friends. The three girls of the Rookie Nine were up first. Don't you worry Mizukage-san. Our flower shop is gonna make your wedding the most beautiful you've ever seen, Ino told her. Sakura smiled. I'm just so happy to be in wedding, I can't believe I'm the Mizukage's bridesmaid. Father was very pleased to hear I was in the wedding, he said it was good for the image of a Claren head. Hanata stuttered. Sakura ran up to Naruto and gave him a hug, I'm not gonna see you for a month until we have the wedding, and only a once a month after that when you come from your ambassador duties, you'd better not forget about me. Naruto smirked, well you have hit me a lot, I think my memory might be impaired. Sakura shot him a look, of course I'll remember you Sakura-chan. Shikamaru sighed, goodbyes are too troublesome. Kiba laughed, and that is why I was made the new best man instead of you. Shikamaru shrugged, I just wish I could go with Choji and help his family handle the cooking, that sounds much easier than being a groomsman, but my mother wouldn't let me back out, this also. Troublesome, everyone else finished for him, they all broke out in laughter. Aruka told gave Naruto a hug and they nodded to each other, they both knew nothing needed to be said there. Jiraiya shook Naruto's hand and told him to keep it up with the toad training, and whispered to him that his parents would be proud. Kakshi offered Naruto one of his books so he could prepare for the wedding night, causing Mei to send him a threatening glance. Sunid gave him a bone-crushing hug and told him that if he became a pervert like his teacher, she'd smack him, causing Naruto to nod quickly. Guy and his little twin Lee told Naruto not to let his flames of youth burn out, and Neji simply told him to keep defying fate. Anko told him to enjoy his wedding night, and maybe if she got drunk enough she'd join him and his wife, making Naruto blush and may roar with laughter. Kakashi pouted and asked why she got to make jokes, which May simply responded to by saying she actually thought Anko was funny. The Jonan shook his head went back to reading his book. Naruto had tears in his as he looked out at all his friends, thanks guys, for everything. My life wasn't always great, but you guys really made it feel like home. I promise to see you all as soon as I can. I'll never forget you guys, you're all awesome. May smiled gently at her soon-to-be husband, I just arrived, it's time to head out. She looked out at all of Naruto's friends, thank all of you for everything you've done for Naruto, I'll make sure you're all an active part of Naruto's life, I promise. Naruto nodded and they began to head out. He took one last look at his old home, he was really going to miss it. Underscore. They were traveling to the mist when a sudden outburst from Naruto stopped them, or damn it. They looked at him confused, what? Naruto frowned, I forgot to talk to Pervy Sage about adding you on to the toad summoning contract. Mei looked stunned, why would you do that? Pervy Sage told me it's common for married couples to add one another to their summoning contracts, it only makes sense to put you on it, you're great with the toad's three main elements, water, earth, and fire for their oil. It just makes sense, I'm gonna give to our kids anyway. 
Naruto told her. Mei nodded, it did make sense. She thought about what he had said and smirked, so, you do want us to have kids. Naruto blushed, well I thought about it and yeah, I do. I've always wanted to have a family, so why wouldn't that involve kids? I mean I don't want any right now, but eventually kids sound kinda cool. Mei walked over and kissed him on the cheek, I'm glad you feel that way. Naruto blushed again, I'm gonna summon Gamakichi, just give me a sec. Naruto made a few hand seals and pressed his hand to the ground, a plume of smoke shot up and a small toad appeared, yo. Oh hey Naruto, why'd you summon me? Gamakichi asked. I was wondering if it would be possible to add my soon-to-be wife, Mei, to the summoning contract, we're heading to the mist right now so please make it quick. Naruto told him. Gamakichi nodded, oh yeah, there's a whole thing for that, it's actually pretty easy, I'll tell you all about on the way. They continued to travel and Gamakichi told Naruto how it worked, it was pretty simple really. Once they were married Naruto would summon the boss toad. There would be a small ceremony promising loyalty to Naruto and the toads, and Mei would sign her name if Gamabunta felt she was worthy. Since she was a cage, Naruto was pretty sure Gamabunta would feel she was worthy. They had finally reached the gates of the hidden mist, Naruto could see several faces very happy to see Mei return to the village. Naruto could see two women, one with brown long hair who must have been about 18, and thin woman who looked like a much prettier Kissim, with light blue skin, dark blue lips and hair which was a little short who looked about 15. The one with blue hair was first to speak, so your Mei's new boy toy, Naruto raised an eyebrow, just kidding cutie, I'm Huiri Hoshigaki, it's nice to meet you. Hoshigaki. Are you related to that guy who tried to kill me? Naruto asked. Huiri gave a nervous laugh. Yeah sorry about Kissim, he wasn't always like that. After he was forced to kill four of the seven swordsmen he kinda lost faith in the mist. I'll never forgive those bastards from the Akatsuki who took advantage of him when he was vulnerable like that, she finished angrily. The other girl nodded, my father was one of the swordsmen Yagaru forced Kissim to kill, he was Fuguki Shikazan. I hated Hari at first, but once we got to know each other we agreed it was Yagaru's fault, although I guess now we know we know it's the Akatsuki's fault, they really seem to have an interest in the seven swordsmen. I'm Richuji by the way. Wow you guys knew some of the seven swordsmen, that's amazing. I actually wield Zabuza's old sword, Naruto said, showing him the blade. They both sat eyes at it in awe, it was really quite amazing, just the craftsmanship alone was sight to behold. May decide to introduce the two further, Hari here has a very powerful affinity for water, and Richuji use hair-based jutsu like her father, although it's not a bloodline. They're my other two bridesmaids and two very close friends of mine, you should really get to know them better if you can. Naruto smiled, we have to go see the council right, let's just have them go with us and we can talk on the way, Naruto said offering the two his arms. Both Huiri and Richuji smiled and accepted, while Mei, cute and polite, you bagged a good one. Mei laughed and shook her head. Admittedly she was slightly bothered she didn't get an arm to be guided with. They reached the Mazukage's building after a nice wall in which Naruto learned a lot his new friends. He learned about Mei meeting them after breaking up an argument between the two when they were younger, about how over the next three years the two would slowly become good friends, 
and they even managed to sneak in a threat towards Naruto about if he ever hurt Mei. It was an interesting walk for sure. They entered the council's chambers and took their seats, Naruto was right next to Mei at the center of the council table with the rest of them surrounding her. Mei stood up announced the meeting had officially began, and they all went right to the topic on everyone's mind, Naruto Uzumaki. I for must say, first and foremost, that having this boy here presents a major risk, one councilman began. May stopped him there, all right let me stop this before it starts, Naruto may be a risk but he'd be a risk we had to protect even if I didn't marry him. If we're allied with the leaf then we're going to have to defend either way. Well maybe we should have chosen different allies, another councilman suggested. All the other villages have Jinjirikis as well, at least we were smart enough to chose the strongest village. May responded. Another councilman was about to speak, but was cut off by May, it's not up for discussion, this is final, does anyone have anything real to discuss? They all grew quiet, no one really had anything to say. One councilman finally said, perhaps we should just discuss the wedding. They spent the rest of the time discussing how the wedding would go and who all would be invited, it was rather boring, but better than the political discussions. The meeting ended late and they were both exhausted, neither of them could wait to get home and get some rest. Naruto had never seen the Mizukage's estates either and he was very eager to see his new home. They continued walking until May stopped them at a large three-story house, well here we are. Naruto couldn't believe his eyes, while we live here. May nodded, yup, come on, I'll show you around. They took tour of the large mansion, 15 bedrooms, 4 bathrooms, a massive dining hall, even a hot spring for bathing, it was really amazing. They reached the master bedroom and May went to get changed, leaving Naruto to look around. It had a very large bed, with a beautiful bed frame. Just about everything in the room was beautiful, it was really a sight to see. May walked back out in her usual sleeping attire and a Naruto got changed as well. It had been a long day, and Naruto was going to have to find Mizura and Zawabo tomorrow to help with his ceiling and wind chakra. Naruto sighed, he never really took a break anymore, he would have to change that when he got married. May could sense what he was thinking and cuddle up to him, look at it this way, at least you aren't like me and have to do paperwork all day long, at least training is fun. Naruto laughed, with the way they all talked about paperwork, maybe bringing peace to the ninja world was gonna be easier than Bihokage ever would have been. Naruto awoke to his first day in the mist to a messenger knocking on the door, May had awoken before him so she answered it. It was a messenger nin, informing them that the council want to see just how powerful Naruto was. May sighed, she had been expecting this, sorry Naruto-kun, I know you were hoping to go and find Zawabo and Mizura right away, but they won't stop until you show them what you can do. Come to think of it, I don't think I fully know what you can do. Naruto gave his classic foxy grin, well then, come by and watch with the council. After all, you need to know how freaking awesome your husband is. May laughed, alright then, you get dressed and let's get going, those old pricks don't like to be kept waiting. Naruto reached the council room, Kubikiriboko strapped on his back and his soon-to-be wife by his side, alright, I heard you guys wanted to see just what I can do, so let's get out to the training grounds so I don't blow the roof of this place. One of the councilmen snared, you seem pretty cocky short stack. 
Naruto shot him a grin, wait do you hold off on calling me cocky until you see what I can do. They all nodded and went down to the training grounds, I've got people to go see so let's make this quick, Naruto said and made about a dozen shadow clones. They all started to mutter about large chakra reserves, and Naruto just kept smirking, you guys haven't seen anything yet. The clones began to go through hand signs, one used great breakthrough, another slicing a palms, cyclone shuriken was done by one of them. And two of them helped Naruto perform a raisingan, while another used a wind enhanced kubakiri boko to slice through several logs. The council was stunned at the pure display of power, this kid was definitely chunin material, hell he might have been jonin material, impressive, we understand you can summon the legendary boss toad, may we see it. Naruto shook his head, hell no, if I called him for something like this, he'd kill me. The council nodded, fine, was satisfied with your display and rank, you are dismissed. May walk over with a large smile on her face, very impressive, you'll be a jonin in no time if you keep this up. Naruto shot her another foxy grin, well I need to be strong if I'm marrying the Mizukage. May leaned over and gave him a small peck on the lips, I suppose you do, Mizura is on a mission, but he should be back later today, go and find Zawabo for now, he's at a training ground just east of here. Naruto nodded, alright see you later. Naruto went east until he found a burned training ground, he felt safe to assume Zawabo was here. He found him practicing a fire jutsu on one of the trees, he looked about 14, he stopped when he saw Naruto coming, hey there, can I help you with something? He asked cheerfully. Naruto smiled at him. I'm Naruto, and I was wondering if I could get some help with my wind jutsu, I know you're not much better than me with it, but it's still nice to have someone to bounce ideas off of. Zawabo so looked up in realization, oh, you're May's soon to be husband, it's nice to finally meet you, I'm Zawabo, but I guess you already knew that. I'd be happy to help you in any way I can, May's a close friend of mine. Naruto nodded, Yeme mentioned that, which reminds me, will you be in the wedding as one of the groomsmen, she made some of my friend's bridesmaids, it only makes sense to make some of hers groomsmen. Zawabo so smiled brightly, of course, it'd be my pleasure. Who all else is gonna be in the wedding? Naruto thought for a second, you wouldn't know any of my friends, the only ones you would know is Richuji and Huiri. Zawabo so went wide-eyed, who here is gonna be in the wedding? Sweet, maybe I'll get to walk down with her. Naruto raised an eyebrow, do you have crush on her? Zawabo so blushed, so what if I do, you aren't one of those assholes who make fun of her for her skin are you? Naruto raised his hands in defense, no, no, I just thought maybe you could ask her to be your date for the wedding. Zawabo so looked at the ground, nah, I don't think she likes me like that. Have you ever asked her out? Naruto asked. Well. No, Zawabo responded. Then how do you know, maybe she likes you back? Naruto suggested. Zawabo so thought about it for a second, I don't know, maybe. Why don't we just move on to Jutsu? Naruto pulled out one of his scrolls and they got to work. Naruto and Zawabo had made a decent amount of progress on his jutsus, Zawabo really knew about the theoretical part of wind style. Naruto had just gotten word that Mizura had returned, and he went to go and find him. Naruto saw him leaving the Mizukage's building and went up to talk to him, Hey Mizura. Mizura looked up, yes, may I help you? 
Naruto went to shake his hand, Hi, I'm Naruto, I'm guessing Mei told you about me, I was wondering if you could help me in learning about sealing. Mizura smiled, Naruto, yes, Mei did tell me about you. I would be happy to teach you about sealing, it'll be nice to have another sealer in the mist other than myself. Naruto was a little off put by how stoic and calm yet pleasant the man seemed, kinda like a happy Neji which didn't seem wrong, but decided not to worry about and just go with the flow. Great, I was reading something about gravity seals, and I was thinking that those would be perfect, I saw a friend of mine use something like them and the results were fantastic. Mizura nodded, yes. They are quite useful for building one speed, strength and stamina, and once they are removed your body becomes even faster, but please do not tell anyone that I can do this for you, and I would advise not to advertise your sealing skills either, once people learn you know how to seal they'll never leave you alone in asking for favor involving it. Naruto understood what he meant, and they started to go into the art of sealing. Naruto decided to ask Mizura quickly, oh and before I forget, I know it would mean a lot to Mei if you were in the wedding, she invited two of my friends to be bridesmaids so I thought I would invite you to be a groomsman. Mizura nodded with a smile, of course, it would be my honor. Naruto got home and fell back onto the giant mattress in the master bedroom. It had really been a long day much longer than he would have liked, he had a feeling the next few weeks were going to be like this. Mei looked at Naruto and shook her head, looks like both of us had a busy day, did you track down Mizura and Zawabo? Yeah, we got a start on what we would be working on, we should have the gravity seal ready by the day after tomorrow, and I've got a good start on a couple new wind jutsus. He told her, oh and I asked Mizura and Zawabo to be my other two groomsmen, I hope that's okay. Mei smiled brightly, no, that's great, you really did that. Thank you, this is really important to me. Naruto just nodded, yeah, I know. I'm sorry I'm if I seem out of it, I'm just really tired. All right. I'm pretty tired myself. I'm gonna go get changed, see you in just a sec, Mei responded. It didn't take long for Naruto to fall asleep, it really had been a long day. The next three weeks passed incredibly quickly, the gravity seals were helping out with Naruto's physical strength. He learned two new wind jutsu, drill wind fist and great air repulsion. The progress he was making was extremely impressive. He had made a lot of new friends in the mist, once the village got to know Naruto, they really came to like him. Mei continued with classic political bullcrap, although after Naruto's display, they stopped really being concerned with him. The two of them had grown very close over the past few weeks, they still hadn't said I love you, but considering they had only been together two months, they were doing quite well. The wedding was just a week away, and everyone in the mist was very excited, things like this didn't happen often, and was gonna be one hell of a party. Naruto woke up and walked to look out the window, was now only two days away from the wedding, something he still couldn't believe. He saw Mei had woke up too, and walk up to her, how are you feeling? Mei smiled, good, you. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, a little nervous but excited. Mei leaned up and kissed him, I know, so am I. Naruto looked at her and smirked, my friend will be arriving today, I can't wait to see them again. Naruto told her and walked out the door to go meet them, it was kinda nice to know people had come just to see him. All of Naruto's friends arrived at the gate, smiles on their faces, this was gonna be a fun weekend, they could tell.
Naruto ran up to meet them. Hey guys, what up? They all smiled and as he ran up, it was really good to see him again. Naruto, how have you been? I hope the mist has been treating you well, Sunid told him. Of course Barkan, I am marrying Mizukage for Pete's sake. Come on, I know good restaurant where we can catch up. Naruto responded. They all nodded and followed him, he got to hear all of Naruto's new stories about his new life in the mist. Naruto had good time hearing about Sakura's new training, the nose planning of the flowers, Kiba helping with the Inazuka dogs, everything. Naruto loved being with his friends again, and Mei came and joined them shortly, and things got even more fun once Huiri and Richuji came and hung out with Anko. The night was great, and it made Naruto even more excited for the wedding. Naruto looked around the room, Kiba, Shikamaru, Zawabo, and Mizura all wore elegant black kimono like the one his was wearing. He was serenely in the groom's room, waiting for his big with his soon-to-be wife. In just an hour he would be married, Mei would be his wife, that still blew Naruto's mind. Kiba walked up and put a hand on Naruto's shoulder, you ready man. Naruto smiled and nodded, yeah, I think I am. It's kinda strange, but I really like Mei. I think we're actually gonna be really happy together, pretty lucky for an arranged marriage. Troublesome as you can be, you tend to get pretty lucky. I guess this is no exception, Shikamaru told him. Naruto laughed. He did seem to always find to make best out of any situation. Zawabo came up and slapped him on the back. Will I'm glad you're here. Thanks to you I actually got a date with Huiri. Naruto shook his head. All I did was tell you to ask her out. It wasn't that hard. He has a point Zawabo. The signs were right there. Mizura told him. Zawabo so pouted while the rest of them laughed, they wondered if the bridesmaid's room was like this. Sakura, Hinata, Huiri, and Richuji sat patiently waiting for Mei to come out in her dress. The anticipation was killing them, but they knew something like this took time. Mei finally walked out and everyone's jaw dropped, she looked amazing. She wore an elegant white dress that hugged her body, showed just enough cleavage so that it was attractive without being trashy, a simple white veil covered her face, and no straps so that it showed her shoulders. So how do I look? She asked. You look great, you're gonna knock Naruto out, Sakura told her. Wow Mei, you look fantastic, said Huiri and Richuji. Yes, you look very nice, Naruto will be very happy, Hinata said, proud that she had kept control of her stutter, something she intended to do until the wedding was over. She had been working on confidence since Naruto left, she was happy to say she was making great progress. Mei sighed with a small smile, this is really it isn't it, I'm getting married today. She still couldn't believe, she was getting married today. She kept saying it over and over in her mind, it was just amazing to her. Mei knew when she became Mizukid she would likely have to be politically married, but she honestly never expected to actually like her husband, she thought she was going to get some uptight jackass who felt it was nothing more than a job to marry her, she never thought he would actually put forth some effort in this relationship. Naruto had really surprised her, she honestly wasn't sure if she could have gotten anyone better. She was really starting to feel this whole thing could work out. The time had finally arrived, Naruto stood at the altar, waiting for his soon-to-be wife to walk down the aisle. He took a deep breath, it was kinda overwhelming, all of this happening at once, but he knew he could do this, for Mei and his friends, 
he would do anything. The music played and the doors opened to sight that took Naruto's breath away. Mei stood there, looking absolutely amazing, Ao, the man she had come to view as a father, walked her down and she gave him small kiss on the cheek. Ao smiled and gave her hug, and she walked up to meet Naruto. Sunid, who was performing the ceremony, began to speak, We're here today to join these two nations and two hearts in marriage. Both of these individuals, who I'm proud to call my friend, exemplify the very thing their villages stand for. Naruto represents the undying and unsurrendering spirit of the leaf, and Mei represents the diversity and ability to survive the mist has become no for. If you would both please read your vows. Naruto pulled his out of his pocket and took another deep breath. May, when this all first started I was terrified. I always put on a mask when I'm scared, and when I first met it was no exception. Yet, in no time at all, you showed me I could trust you with who I really was. We have a very similar past. We both know about being held back, but refusing to give up on our dreams. You made me feel like I really had someone I could talk to, someone who really knew what I'd gone through, I really feel like there's someone just like me out there. I can honestly say with all my heart, I love you Mei Terumi. Mei had small tear in her eye, it was the first time either of them had said it. She wiped the tear from her eye and began to speak, Naruto, when I found out I would be married to some person I didn't know, I became sure that I would someone I could never love. Life had never seemed to be kind to me. But then I met you, and you were amazing. You're kind, sweet, strong, everything I'd ever wanted in a man. You were always honest with me. You really came to trust me and it made me feel like I could trust you. We were so similar, so much alike, I really felt like you understood me. I'm glad I was forced into marriage, because if I wasn't I never would have met you, I love you too Naruto Uzumaki. Sunid smiled and finished the ceremony, I now pronounce you man and wife, you may kiss the bride. They kissed and everyone cheered, I now present for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Naruto Uzumaki. The reception was fantastic, amazing food, dancing, everything you could ever imagine. Ino had went a little insane with the flowers, blue and orange roses were everywhere, but it still looked very nice. Kiba danced with Hanata, Zuwabo with Huiri, Anko even got Kakashi to dance. Naruto and Mei danced the night away, they were both so happy they had really found someone special, someone to spend the rest of their life with. Mei stepped outside for a moment to get a breath of fresh air, the night had been great so far, but very overwhelming. Well well, little Mei, how have you been? A figure in the shadows asked. Mei didn't even jump, fine kiss him, it is my wedding night after all. The blue-skinned swordsman stepped out, you do know what he contains don't you? Mei scowled, yes and I don't care, he's a great person and the damn fox doesn't change anything. Kiss him turned serious, for your sake and my sisters you should stay away from him. We will come after him eventually, and when we do nothing will stop us. May sent him a wave of killer intent, you have to get through me first. Kissum chuckled, you always were a wild one, don't say I didn't warn you. Kissum jumped away leaving May to stand there, she went back inside to spend more time with her new husband. Naruto held May close to him as they danced, he felt like whole world had just melted away for a short while, so really meant everything you said up there, you really love me. 
May put her hand onto his chest, of course, I couldn't imagine anything better. Naruto smiled, I'm glad, I really want you to be happy. May got a seductive smirk on her face, just wait till tonight, once we get back to the mansion, I'm going to make you very happy. This is gonna be the best weekend of your life. Naruto blushed, should we head out then? May nodded, oh yes, I think that we should. She grabbed his hand and rushed at the door. They kisses passionately all the way through the hallway to the master bedroom. Once they got there May pushed him on the bed and went into the bathroom. I'm gonna put something a little more comfortable on. Be right back. Naruto nodded dumbly and waited. May walked out wearing a lace black and blue bra with matching panties. You ready for the real deal? Naruto nodded vigorously and she pounced on him. The room would be filed sounds of passion and moans of pleasure throughout the night. Naruto may have been younger, but he could more than keep up with Mei, and with Mei knowing fun things they could try, it was an incredible night for both of them. So, how'd I do? Naruto panted. Mei was panting as well, fantastic, your stamina is amazing. Three straight times? That's just impressive. Naruto smiled. Soon the two both drift off to sleep. It had been the most stressful and incredible day they had ever had. Naruto stood with his new wife seeing his friends off at the gate. Bye guys, I'll see you in about a month. They all smiled and nodded. Jiraiya walked up to Mei. But she cut him off before he could speak. You'd better not ask what I think you're about to ask. Jiraiya looked surprised. What are you talking about? I was just gonna ask if Naruto was gonna have signed the Toad contract. Mei looked relieved. Oh good. Yes he was. Jiraiya smiled. Good. What did you think I was gonna ask? Mei simply waved the question off. Nothing. Kakashi told Naruto to keep up with his training, Sakura told him to come and see her as soon as possible, Kiba asked how his first night with Mei was, earning him a slap on the back of the head, although when Anko asked the same question everyone laughed. They all left and Naruto stood holding Mei's hand, he had a good feeling about the next few years. Naruto spent his first few day a marriage in pure bliss. His wife couldn't seem to keep her hands off him, and Naruto wasn't complaining. The village loved him, they went from being just okay with him to being fantastic to him overnight. Both Naruto and Mei had taken a few days off to relax for their honeymoon, for which they went to a nearby hot spring resort. May walking in the couple's spring with nothing but her bikini on and the two of them spending the rest of the day there was a particular highlight. Zawabo so and Huiri continued to date, and Mizura even caught the two together one day, but said nothing under threat of death. Of course life started to turn back to normal once they got home. Well almost. May and Naruto stood in the middle of a large clearing, Getting ready to summon Gamabunta, you ready? Naruto asked. Mei nodded nervously, as ready as you can be when you're about to meet a toad the size of mountain. Naruto laughed nervously, I'm sure it'll go fine, just watch for his. Anger issues. Anger issues. Mei roses an eyebrow. Naruto decided it was better to show her than tell her so he went through the hand seals and slammed his hand on the ground. A large amount of smoke filled the clearing, and a booming voice could be heard, Who the hell summoned me? Oh, it's the Gaki, what do want shrimp, I was about to have some sake. Naruto jumped of his head and stood next to Mei, this is my new wife, I wanted her to sign the contract. Gamabunta looked at her, Oh yeah, my boy mentioned something about this. 
So this her heart. Well at least she's cute for a human, what good is she in a fight? I have two bloodlines, lave and boil release, I'm excellent with earth, water and fire style, May told him. Gamabunta nodded, sound good, and my son told me you're a cage. I think it's pretty safe to say if you're strong enough, we just have to make sure you're loyal to us and the Gaki. May smiled, I can promise you, I would never break either of your trusts. All right, just have her sign the contract and practice with the toads, you know the drill, said the toad. That's it. You almost killed me, and you just let her join no question, Naruto screamed. Gamabunta shrugged, she's a cage, you're not, deal with it. He poofed away while Naruto pouted, May just smiled and they got to work. The next three months were rather uneventful. Naruto went on his visits to the leaf and saw his friends, learn about how they were coming along and all that. Sakura was still learning medical ninjutsu, Lee was healing from his injuries, Shikamaru continued to hate the work of being a chunin, so on and so forth. Yet, every time he went to the leaf, he still thought of his old friend Sasuke. From what Sunid had told him Sasuke was getting them was incredibly valuable, he was doing quite well. Naruto hoped he was finding what he was looking for, and that he would see his old friend again soon. Naruto returned from his third visit with the leaf to find that his wife had mission for him. He was very happy to hear that, he hadn't gotten a real mission since he got to the mist. Naruto smiled and gave his wife a quick kiss, great, what have you got for me? You and Zawabo will be going on mission to recover Kiba, she began. Wait, Kiba's in trouble, why am I just finding out about this now? Naruto screamed. May laughed, not your friend Kiba, the Twin Blades Kiba. It's one of the seven deadly swords. We've tracked down the missing nin who has it and we want you and Zawabo to retrieve it. Naruto nodded, oh okay, who has it? May pulled out a bingo book, turned to a certain page, and handed it to Naruto, Reiga Kurosuke, second wielder of Kiba. Kiba, he's extremely talented with lighting chakra, and has developed his own style that he refers to as, lighting funerals. He seems to have developed some kind of sensory powers we can't quite explain. Second wielder of Kiba, he's extremely talented with lighting chakra, and has developed his own style that he refers to as, lighting funerals. He seems to have developed some kind of sensory powers we can't quite explain. He didn't have them when he was still in the mist, but they've made him much more deadly. Normally we would send some Jonan to do this, but you and Zawabo are Jonan level, and also your wind chakra will make his lighting chakra very vulnerable. It should be a decent challenge, but nothing you can't handle. handle. All right, I'm gonna head home and get packed, what time do I leave tomorrow? Naruto asked. 6 a.m. don't be late, May got a little smile on her face, I'll be sure to give you a proper send-off when I get home tonight. Naruto nodded happily and headed home to prepare for his mission. Naruto and Zawabo were on their way to a small village just outside the hidden mist, Reiga was supposed to be staying there with some bandits. Supposedly he was leading them into the mist with his knowledge of its defenses, 
and they would raid as much as much as they could. One of the mist's spies discovered this and told the Mazukij immediately, the mist had been trying to retrieve all the seven deadly swords for a while now, and with Kissam having same header they would need to retrieve as many of the other blades first before they could go for him. I still don't get it, how can someone just develop sensory powers out of bowware? Naruto asked. Zawabo shrugged, I don't know, it does seem kinda impossible. Being a sensor is something you're born with, not something you develop. If we can we should find out how he got them, if it's something we can recreate it would be a major gain for the mist. Naruto nodded, it would be nice to have more sensory ninjas, especially since they're so rare. They reached the hotel they were staying at and went inside. Zawabo paid for one two-person room that he and Naruto would share. They went up to the room and laid down, they were both tired from all the traveling. Zawabo went to go and turn if the light, we'll get up at about 7 a.m. tomorrow, all right. Naruto yawned, yeah, sure. They both laid down and drift off to sleep, they would have a big day tracking down Rega tomorrow. Naruto and Zawabo had been looking for Rega for a couple hours, but hadn't gotten very far. It appeared most of the town was afraid of him, they wouldn't tell them anything. They decided to start asking if anyone had seen any bandits around, which got them much better results. It appeared that, while the town feared Rega, they hated the bandits and wanted them gone. Rega would find out if someone turned on them, but bandits weren't very smart, it was perfectly believable that one of them could let something slip, Rega wouldn't have any proof that they had told anyone anything. They were able to find out that the bandit was staying at an abandoned mine shaft just outside of town. Naruto and Zawabo were currently on their way to the mine shaft and creating a plan to get Kiba. We're going to have to take out the bandits first, I'm going to use great fire incineration inside the mine shaft, that should fry or at least immobilize all the bandits, Rega won't be so easy, I imagine he's staying somewhere else nearby, but he'll definitely come after us after once we kill his men. Naruto nodded and got in position above the mine shaft, Zawabo made the proper hand signs and shot a massive stream of fire inside. There was some screaming and Zawabo cleared out, several bandits came running out. They waited till everyone had left and went inside, they found some random pillaged items, and sat down and waited for Rega to arrive. It had been about two hours and Ryaga finally made his way into the cave. He spoke up when he saw Naruto and Zawabo sitting there, so you're the people who killed my men? and you were even nice enough to stick around. How kind of you. Naruto stood up, Rega Kurosuke, by order of the hidden mist you are to either give us the Kiba blade and return home for trail, or we kill you on sight and take the swords. Your choice. Rega laughed, oh I will enjoy this funeral, it will be a truly glorious one. Prepare yourself to die. Rega reached for his swords and channeled lighting into them, steam's lighting shot from the blade, Naruto and Zawabo narrowly missed getting hit. The fight quickly left the mine shaft and they continued to attempt to land a hit on Rega, but failed miserably. Rega would always manage to dodge it, and he continued to attack Naruto and Zawabo, but he almost always ended up hitting them. Naruto couldn't figure out how he was doing it, he must have been using his sensory powers, it was the only way he could do this. Zawabo, so, we've got to figure out how his sensory powers work if we don't he's gonna fry us, said Naruto. I know, but what are we supposed to do? Zawabo so, yelled back. 
Naruto looked back at Rager and noticed he had a very large hump-looking thing on his back. He appeared to mumbling to it, Hey Zawabo, I think he's mumbling to that thing on his back, see if you can separate him from it. Zawabo nodded, alright, but how do we hit him, nothing we've done so far has worked. He was right, if they couldn't hit him how do they separate them? Naruto realized he only had one option, I'm gonna activate the Kyuubi's chakra and go all out on this guy, make sure I don't do too much damage and get him when once they're separated. Zawabo went wide-eyed, but nodded. Naruto started to channel the Kyuubi's chakra and his appearance and demeanor immediately changed. His eyes were now red with black slits, his whisker marks were more prominent, and teeth were sharper. He went full out on Rega, and after about 10 minutes he was able to slash the whatever it was off his back. Out of the it came a child, maybe about 12 years old. That's when Naruto figured it out, Rega wasn't the sensor, this kid saw that Zawabo had Rega pinned down, looks like he's wasn't the tough without the kid backing him up. Naruto stopped channeling the Kyuubi's chakra and walked over, they had a lot to figure out. Rega ended up killing himself to avoid be captured, the kid who was sensor wouldn't talk to them, he just cried for a while and left. Both Naruto and Zawabo agreed it was best just to let him go, he wouldn't help them if they forced him to come anyway. They retrieved Kiba and went home, it took them about two days to get to the mist. Naruto was thrilled to be home and the council was ecstatic to how the Kiba blades back. Naruto no had another a ranked mission under his belt, so that was great too, Mei was getting very impressed with her husband. It was an eventual mission to be sure. Thanks for watching please subscribe and like this video if you want some more what if video comment 3 hearts for more what if.